Good evening, if you're in Central Time, Wheaton area, or good morning if you're halfway across the world. Glad to have you with us tonight. My name is Jason Kircher. I serve as the Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Wheaton College, and we're so glad to host this Financial Aid 101 seminar with our Director of Student Financial Services, Karen Belling, today. Um, we'll be here for about a 45 minutes to an hour if there's lots of questions, and I'm so glad that you chose tonight to spend with us. We know that the college journey involves more than just finding fit, but also making it an accessible, affordable opportunity for you students and you families uh, to invest in your students' education. And so we'll do our absolute best to equip you and engage with you in your questions and talk with you about what it takes to make affording and accessing a Wheaton College education possible for as many families as we can. Um, a few housekeeping notes before we get started. You'll note you are already on mute. We have a large group. We had nearly 100 families register for this. There'll probably be some more joining. So you're gonna be on mute the whole time, mostly so you can feel free that if you have a pet, it's totally okay if they're barking in the background, no problem at all. But we wanna make sure um, that if you do have questions, we get those answered too. We'll have an entire Q&A session, uh, about 10, 15 minutes probably at the end of this time together. So feel free to have your questions um, posted in the chat feature here. Um, I'll put a note so that everyone can check it out. Um, so please, as, as questions come to your mind, um, feel free to put those questions in the chat. I'll be recording a few of those to ask and answer during our time together and I'll moderate through some. Um, and if there are questions that we don't have time to get to, we'll make sure to collect those and follow up afterwards. In addition, we are recording the session. That's also part of a follow-up. We did have a few families who couldn't make it for tonight's session. So we'll be sending it to everyone who registered for this event afterwards. It'll take us about two or three days to get that done. But um, just so you know, we are recording. And so uh, you should know um, that your likeness is being recorded if you have your video on. Uh, finally, um, like I mentioned, it usually takes us about a week uh, to send out both the recording of the video as well as answers to all the questions during this time. We're really grateful for your questions and want to make sure that they are all passed along. So use the chat feature extensively uh, during this time. Without further ado, I want to introduce to you Karen Belling, our Director of Student Financial Services. Karen has served at Wheaton College for over two decades and has given so much of her time and expertise to helping families from all walks of life, from all parts of the country and around the world, make it possible for them to attend Wheaton College. She's an expert and someone who is so great and willing to engage with your questions today, so I'm so grateful for her time. Uh, Karen, take it away. Well, thank you, Jason, and thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. I'm really grateful for your time, and I hope that you'll find this to be beneficial. Um, we're just really en enjoying getting to interact with all of you. Before launching into the presentation, I thought I would just take a minute to introduce a little bit about Student Financial Services. I am just one of nine team members on, on our team, and we in addition to serving financial aid, we also handle all the billing and payments for the college. So we really would handle all of your student financial needs and questions from financial aid all the way to getting the bill paid. So we really have found that that has streamlined and been helpful for our students and parents to just have one office to interact with as, as you're trying to um, navigate all the various phases of student finances. Your student will be um, assigned to a student financial services advisor, and it will be designated by the first letter of their last name. And then they will have that same advisor for their whole four years here at Wheaton. And we have found that that's just a wonderful way. Our staff love it because they get to know the students and their families really well. Um, the families appreciate it. They're not having to start from scratch every time they have a question or email to follow up with. So we really try to um, come alongside you and really look forward to getting to work with all of you um, through these years. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started. And there we go. So um, for tonight, I thought we would spend the uh, first part of our time talking about the Wheaton's funds, and we'll include talking about our, both our academic scholarships and our need-based aid. Then we'll talk a little bit about the federal loan program, and I'll go through some options and just some examples of how families have done some financing through, through their times here at Wheaton. And then we'll touch on how and when to apply for financial aid, the little process and timing. And then, like Jason mentioned, 
we'll be collecting questions throughout the presentation through the chat section, and then we'll review those together at the very end. So just um, looking forward to our time here. I have found that um, looking at pricing approaches is really important way to start the conversation, even before looking at the various financial aid options that, that schools offer. Um, what I mean by the pricing approach is really what we call a list price. So schools have what they list as their full price for tuition, room, and board, and that's before any scholarships or grants may be subtracted. We, in, in setting our uh, tuition rate, we look to set it at a moderate rate and we are able to use our substantial endowment to reduce our tuition rate, which would actually be about 20% higher in order to support the level of faculty, the academic programs, and the co-curricular activities that we have. So, so what is, how does that really play out? Like, what would that look like? So for example, we have endowed faculty positions. So rather than using tuition dollars to cover salaries for some of the faculty positions, our endowment earnings is able to cover those for students. Another example of when we build a building, we raise funds for building the building project, but then we also endow the building. That way there's long-term financing in place to help cover the maintenance costs. Again, something that tuition dollars don't have to support. So in these ways, even before any scholarships or grants or students that perhaps wouldn't qualify for any need-based grants or scholarships, they're getting a true value because they're getting a higher value than what we're actually charging from the beginning with our list price. But then Wheaton does have a strong commitment to families who still couldn't afford the Wheaton education. And so we've had a longstanding commitment to awarding need-based financial aid um, to help further bring down the cost of attendance for students who otherwise couldn't attend. So what do we mean when we talk about financial need? And that's um, actually a very defined um, calculated type of figure. So families start out the process for financial aid filling out a form called the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. Many of you, you have older siblings, your family, your parents may have already done this form. If you're the first one in your family to attend college, it's an electronic form that is provided by the federal government through the Department of Education, and it will collect a variety of information from your parent income, parent assets, student income, student assets, and it runs a calculation to come up with this number called your expected family contribution, or EFC. Schools will then use that number as a comparison to their cost. So that expected family contribution stays the same at all the colleges that you apply for. So rather if it be a community college or for your private, you know, the, the EFC number stays the same, but your, your financial need will vary from school to school based on the cost of that institution. So that difference between what a college costs and what this expected family contribution indicates as your family's financial strength is what we call financial need. So Wheaton has a goal to have an economically diverse campus, and that is why we really are committed to try to have provide access to students who otherwise couldn't afford to attend. This graphic here is showing you for the past three years, so for the past three freshman classes, the, um, the, the total income of our families you can see it based um, broken down by the different colors here, indicating the, the diversity of income that we have had represented here these past three years. And again, that is really accomplished through our need-based aid that just comes alongside families to try to build a, a, a broad representation of students here on our campus. This past year, so this um, for this class that just joined us this fall, we were able to award $9.2 million to them. Seven and a half million of those dollars were awarded to students who had financial need. That's about 82% of 80% um, of the class who had who received those seven and a half million dollars. The average award for that group was $24,500. So we've really been able to provide some substantial assistance to our families. This pie chart 
represent the seven and a half million dollars that we awarded to the, the students with need. And you can see that nearly half of it, the two green sections, um, were awards that are over $20,000. And about a third of the recipients received awards over $25,000. So again, just a broad amount, a broad representation with, with sizable awards for our students. For this year, we're um, pleased to have three awards for our academic scholarships. We have the Presidential Scholarship at the highest level of $16,000, and then we have a $14,000 award level and a $10,000 award level. These scholarships are awarded um, completely on your admissions application, so there's no additional application requirement. Um, it's going to be evaluating your GPA, looking at the unweighted GPA, they're also going to be looking at your number of AP, IV, or honors courses that you've been able to take, just to be able to recognize your, your, the rigor of your um, high school classes and curriculum. For um, students that are awarded, they are notified along with their admissions at, um, decision, and the scholarships will be renewable for up eight semesters. Um, we don't have a GPA requirement that you have to maintain for to remain um, eligible for them. So there's no renewal, renewal um, eligibility that way. Um, but they are prorated if let's say in your last semester, you, you decided to go part-time and finishing your degree, you didn't need to be enrolled full-time. We do, you can still get the scholarship, but it's gonna be prorated based on the number of hours you're enrolled in. In September, uh, National Merit Corporation announced the semifinalists for the National Merit semifinalists this year. And so if your student uh, was uh, selected to be a National Merit Semifinalist, first, congratulations. That's an amazing accomplishment. Um, we just wanted to share with you that our National Merit Semifinalists will automatically receive the $16,000 Presidential Scholarship level. And then if they go on to become a finalist, then National Merit Corporation will award, will um, designate an award for you. And then that amount will then be added to your $16,000 scholarship. So whatever National Merit Bank um, announces as your, as your finalist award, we add that to your scholarships. Wheaton also has had a long standing commitment to diversity scholarships. You can see our Burr Scholarship was established back in 1987. It is um, the, the scholarship that our most of the most of the students receive, so it's the highest awarded number of scholarships that we are able to award. It also is awarded based on the admissions application, so there's not an additional um, application to be considered for the Burr Scholarship. And it is, they are $2,000 award levels, and they're renewable for all four years um, for our student recipients for the Burr Scholarship. And for James Burr was um, an abolitionist, and he is actually buried on our campus. And, um, as our campus has served as part of the Underground Railroad system. We also have um, full tuition scholarships that we're pleased to be able to offer. We have the church, Nieves, and our bridge scholarship. These applications, these do require an additional application. Uh, the, the deadline has now passed for our early action applicants that was um, uh, just recently passed here, but it is not too late for our regular decision applicants to consider applying for um, that due date is February 15th. And then for any of our transfer students, they can apply up to March 1st. The scholarship notifications for the early action applicants will go out on January 15th, and then the regular action decision um, scholarship recipients will be notified on April 1st. So um, those are those we're very pleased to be able to award. The Army um, offers ROTC scholarships that are two, three, and four-year awards, and they pay full tuition and fees. They also provide monthly living allowance stipends that are three hundred to five hundred dollars a month. They also give um, a $1,200 book allowance. So then Wheaton College comes along and we supplement the living expense stipends to bring the value for the 
the combination of the living expense stipends and our room and board scholarships. So it covers the full room and board costs for here at Wheaton um, for a dorm room and the full meal plan. That way, our Army ROTC scholarship recipients end up with a full tuition, room, board, and book scholarship uh, for their time here at Wheaton. And then it's really convenient because we do have the ROTC pro program right here on our campus. So the students don't have to, trans um, to, to travel at all to participate in all the different activities. For any of the parents who are post 9-11 GI benefit eligible, and if they've been able to transfer their benefits to their dependent, we, are, we participate in the Yellow Ribbon Program. So what that means is Wheaton will supplement the um, GI benefits to bring it up, bring the benefit all the way up to a full tuition level scholarship for the students. The George and Helen Bennett Fund is really um, a very unique and special program that Wheaton is pleased to be able to offer. These are two donors who um, had noted that students were, graduate, were graduating from Wheaton. Um, they had, were prepared and ready and willing, wanting to leave right away after they graduated from school to begin their service overseas and mission work. But we're finding that their service was being delayed because they were having to take out some debt during their time here at Wheaton to help uh, fund their education. So the donors set up a fund where uh, Wheaton College pays off the students' loans, and then the student signs a promissory note to Wheaton. And then the student um, is able to go serve overseas. And then for each year, uh, uh, for four years, then Wheaton will um, use the Bennett Fund to pay off the loan that they had to Wheaton College. So at the end of four years, all of the student, student loans are paid off. So this is, um, students usually apply the spring semester of their senior year to the point where they're already are working with a spending agency. They've already, you know, worked on the getting their support in place and, you know, designated where they're going to do their service and kind of the last cleat Piece that's coming into place is, you know, taking care of the student loan piece before they can begin their service. Um, it's just really a, a blessing to be able to be a part of this program and just being able to hear about the stories of the students as they're getting ready to just use all, all of their experiences here at Wheaton to begin serving the Lord in their various roles. The Wheaton offers um, accelerated MA programs that also provide a cost-effective way to graduate with both a bachelor's and a master's degree from Wheaton. How this works is Wheaton um, charges block tuition rates, meaning that our undergraduate students pay the same amount for tuition anywhere between enrollment in 12 hours up to 18 hours each semester. So students can um, then in their junior year, apply to the Wheaton, to a Wheaton MA program. And what, will, what they'll be able to do is they can take, um, say, 12 or 14 hours of undergraduate coursework, and then they can take master's levels coursework at the same time, so they can take advantage of that up to enrolling up to 18 hours, and then they wouldn't have any additional cost. So this accelerates time for them to be able to graduate from their, complete their master's program, sometimes within a year after graduating, but from their undergraduate program. But then it, it definitely saves the cost because they're getting to take advantage of that black tuition rate and adding some courses without the additional charges. There, I've listed here the different programs. It, it's um, a little faint, but they're all, you can find all those um, on the website as well. But just, you know, another, Another consideration as you're looking at ways that you can um, look at different benefits Wheaton offers. So now we're gonna um, transition and talk a little bit about the Federal Student Loan Program. And the, the same application that you use to apply for financial aid, so the FAFSA, that is the application for the Federal Student Loan Program. 
And in the program, there they set certain limits that the students are eligible to borrow each year. So as a first year student, your student would be eligible for up to $5,500 that first year. It increases to $6,500 as a sophomore, and then their junior and senior years, they could each borrow up to $7,500. So then in addition to having different amounts that you can borrow each year, there's also a little variance in the terms of the loans for the students. So students who have filled out the FAFSA and it has shown that they have financial needs, so their EFC is less than the cost, they can qualify for part of their loans to be subsidized. And what that means is while the student is in school and then for the great six month grace period after they, right after they finish their school, um, the government is paying the interest for your student. The, and then the, um, and then, and then you, and then you don't have to start. The interest doesn't begin until you go into repayment. So during the repayment period, so the entire time while you're in school in that six-month grace period, the government is paying the interest on your behalf. Then the remaining two thousand, so you can have up to thirty-five hundred, but not all fifty-five hundred can be subsidized as a freshman. Up to thirty-five hundred of it can be subsidized. The other two thousand would be what we call an unsubsidized federal direct loan. The, the terms of the loan are the same in, the ter in, in regards to the interest rate. They both have this current year, it's a 2.75% fixed interest rate. They both have the same repayment terms and like the number of years, the standard of repayment is 10 years. There's a variety of other um, repayment options that the federal government offers for student loans, for students to consider. Those are all the same. The difference between the two loans is the unsubsidized loan, the interest accrues while your student is a student, and then for the six month grace period afterwards. What we mean by that is it does it accrues, but it isn't added to the principal balance until they go into repayment. So it's not compounding interest, but it is accruing and then added when you go into repayment. But everything else is the same between the two loans the subsidized and the unsubsidized. Um, a student can, who doesn't have financial need can have the full $5,500 of unsubsidized loan. So um, some students will have you know, just unsubsidized, others will have some of their loan subs, some unsub. Um, some may opt to just accept the subsidized portion. You know, there's a variety of different options that um, students can consider. We will include student loans as offered in your package um, families can decide if they want to take advantage of those loans or not. Similar to the unsubsidized loan for the student, the federal government also offers parents of the Parent PLUS loan program. That is also that has the interest accruing while the student is a student, but the interest isn't added to the balance until they go into repayment. The PLUS loans does not have the grace period, so it would go into repayment right when your student graduates or drops below half time. The interest rate is also um, higher for the parent plus loan than it is for the student loans. They are subject to a credit approval, it's, um, but it's a more simplified review. Than it, so it's not looking, it doesn't do debt to income um, calculations or assessments like that. It's looking at a snapshot of your credit. And if there's no adverse credit showing, um, it will, that they will approve the parent plus loan for the family. In terms of, kind of how our students are doing here at Wheaton, um, this in last, so in May of 2019, 59% of the students who started at Wheaton as a freshman and then graduated in May of 2019 borrowed at some point during their four years here um, with the average loan indebtedness of 29,555. Uh, that compares to the national average for that same class of 2019 at private nonprofit four-year schools, so comparable schools of 33,700. So we're a little below the average for the, our, our peer schools. But where we um, really differ is we have an extraordinarily low default rate. So the cohort default rate is, that was just announced in September 2020 it's a three-year rate. So it's students that graduated in 2017, so three years ago, 
um, and then comparing to looking at them now at 2020, and we only had 0.7% of our students go into default. And that um, compares to a 9.7% rate for um, national rate of, or 6.5% um, comparison to other private nonprofit four-year schools. We really can't talk about finances without really thinking about the investment aspect of you know, what, what you're looking at and what, you, what the value would be. And here are some other numbers that I think really help tell a story about Wheaton. Um, you can see that 87% of our students come and stay at Wheaton and end up graduating from Wheaton. So that, and that is almost double the national average. That can save, save um, time to degree because as you students transfer and go to different schools, it often uh, ends up, you know, credits not transferring all, all well and then ends up adding time to degree. We also have 96% of our first year freshmen in return for a sophomore year, which is an extraordinarily high rate as well. Then, um, Students graduate on time, and then 99% of our students will land in a path baccalaureate program, internship, or, or are employed within six months after graduating. And that's compared to the national average of 86%. And then years out, Wheaton was just ranked number 12 among all colleges and universities based on our alumni's respect, our alumni's ranking. So the story you really hear is students come to Wheaton, they stay at Wheaton, they graduate from Wheaton, they are able to form those lifelong friends because they're friends that they started out here as freshmen, stay with them and are at school all four years. They launch and they 99% are within six months, they're, they're launched and moved on to their next steps here at Wheaton. And then years later, they're still they're pleased with their decision and they're giving Wheaton high ranks based on their, um, the value of how they value their time that they have spent here at Wheaton. So just um, some things, some different kinds of numbers that help kind of tell a different story of when you're looking at Wheaton and thinking in terms of what the investment is. Our, our costs for next year, our tuition rate is 40,570. Um, room and board is 11,300. So the total of uh, direct costs would be 51,870 for next year. Um, looking at that number by itself it can, you know, be a little daunting, but it's helpful to maybe break it down into smaller pieces. So I like to, um, you know, each for each student, these numbers are going to be different. You know, we do have customized financial aid awards. So each each of your Families awards will be a little bit different, but just like to talk through some, some ways that we can break this up into some smaller pieces for you to consider. So, you know, our cost of 51,870, if we subtract off the average um, grant and scholarship total that we had for this year's freshmen who had financial need, that would bring our net price down to 27,370. And then even breaking that then down into smaller pieces, um, perhaps um, your family would have $6,000 a year that they could contribute from savings. You know, if there's been um, contributions to a 529 savings plan or maybe um, a, a, um, you know, a, any other different type of investment that you've been able to be able to contribute from. And then Wheaton also is able to offer a, an interest repayment plan so rather than paying uh, the total in two payments, one in the beginning of each semester, one in the fall and one in the spring, we um, families can divide the payment into five even payments each semester. So 10 payments throughout the year. So $600 a month would equate to six, another $6,000 that could go towards um, paying, paying the cost, um, but breaking it out into smaller chunks. And then um, if a student is able to get a job over the summer and maybe earn $200 a week for 15 weeks over the summer, that can um, contribute $3,000 towards the cost 
that way. Um, we also then talked about student loans, that the students can borrow up to 5,500 then as a freshman. And then for um, those of you who um, your student, this is your first student going to college, you, you may not be familiar with the education tax credit program. Maybe in January, you might wanna um, look at that when you're working on your taxes for next year and just read up on that. But the, in addition to offering financial aid through the Department of Education, the, the government also offers um, financial aid through tax credits, through um, our tax return process. And those can be up to $2,500 per student. And then the, I plugged in the Parent PLUS loan. The Parent PLUS loan can um, vary in amounts. There aren't loan limits on what the Parent um, PLUS loan can be. It just is the difference between the cost less other aid. So that um, brings it to 4,370 and brings us to our, our total, um, the net price of 27,370. So you can see if, and, you know, maybe not all of these would apply to each of you, but it just helps you think in terms of a variety of different approaches or different sources that you could consider as you're piecing together the financing for the education. And our team is, is um, willing and available to meet with you and talk with you about these different options and how you might be able to piece something together as you put together your financial plans. So the, the FAFSA is the, the application that we talked about in the beginning, the free application for federal student aid. It's an online form at fafsa.gov. And each school has a school code um, this is Wheaton School Code 0017810. Um, you can also uh, search for the school. So you could put in the name Wheaton College. Um, please note though that there is a Wheaton College in Massachusetts. So be sure to designate the uh, Wheaton College, Illinois. We've gotten to know the folks over in the Massachusetts Financial Aid Office through the years as we've gotten each other's mail and correspondences and phone calls. But um, every, so every year we're getting each other's information. This next year, so this current FAFSA um, became available on October 1st. So for those of you who haven't done it, you know, I encourage you to just go ahead and do it um, as soon as you're able. It is based on 2019 tax information. So you're not needing to wait to find out what your 2020 tax information is. It's already um, based on 2019. So um, no reason there to, uh, to delay filling that out. When we, um, have your financial aid in information, your FAFSA information. Um, we'll put together a financial aid award for you. And that award is gonna include your scholarship, your academic scholarships, your need-based grant. We will include your loan eligibility in, in your package. And then we'll also, um, for some of you, include work-study funds. The federal work-study program is a program that where the federal government partners with the colleges in providing resources for students to have jobs. Uh, we offer work-study jobs here on our campus, but not all of our students will get work-study, and there are lots of jobs on campus that are not limited to work-study students. So I guess don't feel that if your student doesn't have work-study in their package, that that means that they wouldn't have an opportunity to work here at campus. Our Career and Vocation Center has this really neat um, program called Handshake, where students even in the summer before they come to campus can begin looking for jobs. Um, departments and local area employers will post positions there and the students can apply um, and have things lined up even before they come to campus. Now, as you're filling out the FAFSA and you're providing you know, all this information about your, your family's financial information, um, and you know, it is based on 2019, if you find that you know, this really isn't representing your family's current situation. You know, a lot has happened in this past year. Uh, we have an appeal process where families can um, share with us what their change in financial circumstances is. Perhaps there's a change in um, their, your job status. Maybe there's medical conditions, you know, different variety of things that really, um, has that expected family contribution not really represent what your family's current situation is. And we're able to work um, in some situations, we can actually change the FAFSA numbers. The Department of Education gives financial aid offices the authority to use, make documented changes to a FAFSA 
to re represent a family's current situation. Um, other times, if we're not able to do that, um, we will, cons we will um, consider your student for perhaps some um, donor funded scholarships that we, we have um, get from time to time to be able to help families in, in um, difficult financial situations. So I guess when you're filling out the form, the FAFSA and it's asking all these questions and then you're feeling like, well, but it didn't ask about this and or that. And you know, these things really make a difference in our ability to be able to afford our students education. We really welcome you and encourage you to let our office know that. Um, if sometimes we can do something formally about it, other times, like I said, we we can at least note it and know about it and then um, as if funds become available be able to consider your student for it but if if, we're, if we don't know about it we aren't able to really help you or address you with the situation so let's just take a minute this um here's our our timeline that we're working on uh, if you're in early action one or two even though we asked you know had an apply by date but it's certainly not a deadline. It was more, it's more of a nudge to say, um, you know, get your FAFSA done early. We really want to get financial aid awards to our students before Christmas, but we need to have the FAFSA to be able to do that. So if you haven't done it yet, um, it's definitely not too late. Uh, so please go ahead and do it. Um, we could even potentially still get you your award before Christmas if you get it done here within the next uh, few days. But we will also continue to make financial aid awards throughout the spring as files become complete. It's um, just our um, desire to get you the information as soon as possible that we have, you know, this timelines here for you. For our regular action students, you don't need to wait by any means until January or February. Again, consider um, highly con encourage you to go ahead and complete them now. There are times where you know mistakes are made and there's a little bit of uh, work to be done to sort of get things straightened out with families and it's always helpful to have a little bit more of, of a, some time to, for us to be able to work with you and getting things straightened out so we can get that award done on time. So the here's the so the FAFSA is for those of you who haven't done it it isn't something you're going to do on a commercial break but it also isn't going to be an all-day affair or a week take your weekend or anything like that um it is something in between um i, I like how she says it her she she got it done and her coffee was still hot so you know like it's it is sometimes people i think feel daunted by it it is you know pretty straightforward in terms of looking at the various numbers our office is always willing to help address any questions so if you if you are working on it and just aren't sure how to answer a question we're happy to help guide you and direct you in any way you can so our um here is our contact information i also wanted to mention that um through our website so um at at student financial services on the Wheaton website, we do have um, virtual appointments that you can schedule with your SFS advisor. And it, that we also have those if, if that would be helpful in addition to either um, contacting us by email or by phone. We have um, the direct number there goes to an enrollment services call center where, where it's consolidated where you can ask questions about admissions and student financial services at the same phone number. And then they can direct you if um, there's more specialized needs to our office. Um, again, trying to help streamline um, our care for our students. So that's um, what I have for my our formal presentation. And I think now we can transition to our um, Q&A. Absolutely right. Karen, thank you so much for taking time. And again, I want to thank each and every one of you for making time with us. Uh, you may not know this, but there are over 4,000 colleges and universities in the United States. Please, students do not apply to all of them. And the fact that you would spend an hour on a Tuesday night with us means the world. And we're really, really grateful for it. So God bless you all for, for joining us in the journey. We do have questions coming in. I've been recording lots of them on a document and trying to group them together. So we'll have a great conversation as well. Do you want to point you again to the chat feature? That's where we'll be taking all of your questions. I guarantee already with the many we've already gotten, we won't get to all of them tonight. But 
if you make sure to include your question in the chat, we'll record all of those and follow up afterwards about a week or so from today and make sure to get all each, every single question that's submitted and answer um, at that time. So other items. And again, thank you, Karen, for being here and answering so many great questions for these families. I've got a few that I wanna kind of start off with. And again, please, uh, feel free to hop in. The first very question I want to honor, that very first question that came in was from Anne, and it was an opinion question, and it was talking about financial aid options that are offered by schools or federal loans. Is there one or another that is better for paying for school, either aid offered by a school or federal loans? I guess aid offered by a school. So if you're, if you're offered a scholarship or a grant, that funds that are just like a gift and they don't have to be repaid compared to student loans. Um, they are, while they can be a, a, an attractive financing tool, they are something that is gonna be paid back over time. So you know, your, your scholarships and grants are definitely things that you're, you're gonna to wanna to accept first. That's great. Um, there were a couple of questions that came through about our presidential scholarships specifically. I'm just gonna go run through a couple of them. The first, how are homeschool students considered for presidential scholarships? Homeschool students are welcome to apply to Wheaton College. In fact, in our undergraduate student body, about 10% of all of our students who are homeschooled or home educated in high school. So it's totally normal for us, other than the fact that, of course, every home education situation is unique, but it's a completely normal thing we're very comfortable with and encourage students who are homeschool educated to consider Wheaton College. They're considered just like any other student, meaning that we do look at the rigor of the curriculum that families provide in their um, homeschool education information form, and we're looking to see which courses may or may not be weighted like an honors or an AP course. And of course, we're looking at the unweighted GPA um, that the student receives um, in the home educated environment that you're providing there. So um, in the same way, we consider every homeschool student also for presidential scholarships fully. Uh, another question um, was about the high school report. Um, this is a very particular piece. Many students who are in the common application can submit a high school report to schools. And Diane's question asked if that should be completed for consideration for the presidential scholarships. It can be, technically our presidential scholarships are holistic reviewed, but they are based off of the academics primarily from the high school transcript. The high school report is helpful in a sense that makes sure that we know how many honors or AP courses were offered at a, in, at a school, so that it kind of helps us understand a bit more of the curriculum that was available to a student. It is not required, it's completely optional, and we do have good relationships with many schools and have a sense of where students are coming from. But um, if it's included in the application, it's considered for the Presidential Scholarship Awards. Now, Karen, I want to turn another question. We had a few families on the call who are either um, missionary families or pastor's families. And a question that Jin and I think Leslie asked was, does Wheaton, does Wheaton College have financial aid for missionary kids or pastor's kids? We definitely have financial aid for our missionary kids and our, our pastor's um, students. We don't have um, a special designated scholarship just for that population. Because of our um, strong need-based aid programs, we are able to provide a lot of assistance. Many of these families don't, um, don't have as high and paying earning opportunities. And so then they end up qualifying for significant need-based aid that way. So we're able to support them that way. For our missionary families, we do recognize if they are if they're if they are overseas and having to travel to and from campus, we do recognize a little bit of a higher um, transportation cost in there, and so that can help them qualify for a little additional assistance, recognizing that added cost of having to travel and overseas. Great. We had two related questions, one from Marie, and I'll follow up with one from Lars. Is there a discount if there is a second family member enrolled at Wheaton? And somewhat relatedly, does having multiple family members in undergraduate college at the same time increase financial need for a student or family? And if so, is Wheaton able to meet this increased need? Uh, so um, if your student is coming to Wheaton and they you have two family members in college, the FAFSA does in their calculation, they calculate what's called a parent contribution. So they're looking at parent income and parent assets. And then after calculating what the parent contribution in whole would be, it divides it by the number of um, family members that are gonna be in college. 
So if there's two family members in college, they recognize that those resources then have to be split between two students. So the FAFSA in itself will have a lower expected family contribution when there's two family members in college versus one. Then Wheaton um, keeps the need-based financial aid the same throughout the time a student is here, provided that their situation stays about the same. But then if they have a, if a student who is here has a sibling join them, we add a $4,000 sibling scholarship to that student who is, who is here if the family has financial needs. So we do recognize then that added scholarship to the sibling who's already here. Um, the, the incoming student would get the higher financial aid based on the lower expected family contribution. Great, thanks. Um, relatedly, Diana, so follow up. Does it matter, would it change if it's the parent who is also in school? Yeah, you know, that changed um, quite a few years back where um, parents in college aren't considered um, the same way in the formula as siblings in college. You know, if there is an extraordinary situation, um, we have been able to recognize maybe the cost for a parent to be in school. So let's say that if there was a job loss or some type of situation where they were needing some type of training, we've been able to help that way. But the standard FAFSA and the standard financial aid process doesn't recognize a parent in college, it would have to be some type of appeal situation. Great. Um, Jeff, uh, Jefferson asked this question, and I think you covered some of it, but maybe just to give the, the bullet point approach, can you give a short summary of the grants that Wheaton offers? So just again, clarifying terms, this is different than our scholarships. Scholarships are merit awards. What grants does Wheaton College offer? So for our um, incoming freshmen, we will, we will we just have what's called the Wheaton Grant. So it's one fund. It is awarded. It uses the same formula for all the students, and it would be um, just labeled the Wheaton Grant. Now, underneath the Wheaton Grant, we do have many endowed scholarships that help provide that funding. As continuing students, you may see the Wheaton Grant not show as a Wheaton Grant fund, but as a named scholarship. So we do have need-based funds that are endowed and just Wheaton Grant both, but they're all awarded under the same criteria. Great. Um, Lita, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, asked a really good kind of process question, which I think is just helpful to see how these things interact. Uh, their families filled out all the FAFSA forms and wants to know, one, does Wheaton automatically have access to that information? So just how do we make sure we get access to everything submitted on a FAFSA? And then two, Will scholarships be granted based on that or is a connection need to be made? I might answer the second part first, which is this. Our presidential scholarships are um, every student, whether they're a first year or a transfer, domestic or international, every student who applies to Wheaton College is considered for presidential scholarship. They can range in amount and it, depending on entry term can also vary between first years and transfer students, but we do award presidential academic scholarships um, to any student who's applying um, should they qualify. Um, that information is done at the time of application. And technically, a family does not need to submit a FAFSA to be considered for presidential scholarships. An admission application is all that you need. However, a, a presidential scholarship or other merit aid that is awarded to a student would show up on a financial aid package. Maybe Karen, you can talk more about how the FAFSA information gets to us and how a package then gets created. Yeah, so um, families fill out the FAFSA and you're on um, part of the FAFSA is you're able to list up to 10 colleges to receive your FAFSA information and that's where the school code comes in and you enter um, up to 10 colleges as their school code. And then um, colleges have an electronic mailbox and we get our FAFSAs on a daily basis and load them into our system and um, process them that way. So it's, it's through your listing of colleges that schools have access to your FAFSA information. Perfect. Um, Anne and a couple others that second this, I believe, uh, does Wheaton offer scholarships for talents? So whether that's playing instruments or creative writing separately um, from other financial aid. So our conservatory, ha if you're interested in applying to the conservatory has um, scholarships that are based on auditions. Um, but that's really the only talent-based one separate from our academic scholarships. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, we respect how the diverse backgrounds and talent students do bring to us. We are a division three NCAA institution. About 20 to 25% of our students each year 
our varsity athletes playing in our 21 athletic programs. So we recognize that, but because we're division three, we also cannot award athletic scholarships, but every athlete is considered for academic presidential scholarships, full need-based financial aid. Uh, we find that uh, students who are considering Wheaton are qualifying for strong aid um, for those who do qualify. Kenny asked a question that um, I can answer really briefly. Karen, if you have anything you wanna share in the timeline, is the financial aid package included in the acceptance package or are those separate? Presidential scholarships and our birth scholarships are given and awarded and notified to students at the time of admission. So when students get their packet in the mail, their acceptance folder who, for those who are admitted, they'll also learn if they have received a presidential scholarship and or if they received a birth scholarship. However, our financial aid packages, including need-based financial aid, any grants a student may qualify for and access to federal loans are do come separate in a financial aid package. Um, I think Karen, you mentioned the timeline. Um, maybe we can share when we'll start packaging and for students who maybe haven't applied yet, but might apply in January, uh, when could they expect to receive a financial aid package? So our, our goal is to um, begin sending financial aid packages sometime next week. So those, if any of anyone on the call tonight is already been admitted, um, I would encourage you to go ahead and set up your access to the portal because then you'll be able to view your award online um, as soon as it goes live, which would probably be in about a week and a half, week, week and a half. We will follow up and we will send a nice um, paper award letter with um, a packet of it, with a, a, a wrap of information. Um, but if, if timing is most important to you, you can um, go ahead and set up your portal and so you can access it um, really the same day that it posts in the system. We've got time for maybe three, four more questions. I wanna make sure we end at 8.30 promptly to give everyone either the rest of their evening back or um, the rest of their day back too. Jason asked this question, Karen, is the annual cost at Wheaton fixed for four years? So based on the amount when a student is a freshman or can it change? Yeah, we do um, reevaluate our tuition each year. Um, it's it's our board of trustees do approve our tuition. We usually have that happen in our October board meetings. And um, it typically does have an increase. I would say um, over, the, over the, the most recent history, it's ranged between three and three and three quarter percent. Great. Um, you know, we talked about grants, the scholarships. You also talked about uh, work, study, employment. Um, someone from out of state, I believe, was asking about what the hourly wage for work study employment is and can be at Wheaton College. I even don't know the whole range. I know that um, Illinois is increasing our um, minimum wage, so I think it's going up next this next year, but I'm not. Do you remember the rate that it goes up going up to? Yeah, right now, the minimum wage um, in wheat in Illinois, I believe is nearing $10 an hour currently. And so any student who's employed at Wheaton College would automatically start at that amount, though they can go up based on merit, experience, and other kind of qualifications for the roles that are available on campus. And again, that's true for students who are in work-study programs or who are just working on campus in student employment. Um, that will, I believe the goal is in the next two to three years to move it closer to $15 an hour is I believe what the, the legislation that's has. So it it's on the way up. Lily asked the question, is Wheaton likely to accept any outside scholarships that she may be applying to? Absolutely. And we um, do not reduce your Wheaton grant or offset it based on outside scholarships. We try our very best to have it benefit the student. So um, there are some federal guidelines in terms of how we have to coordinate the packages. So we, for the majority of the students, it can be just added with no other changes to the package. If we do have to make a change, we will at first um, say change a, a loan from subsidized to unsubsidized so that they can then in, increase the amount of their package. The very last thing we ever change is the Wheaton grant amount. Once in a while, the student has just an extraordinarily amount, large amount of outside scholarships. We may have to um, do something with, with the Wheaton grant, but that is you know, maybe one student a year. I mean, it's just the rare exception. Two more questions. Um, this is a two-parter. I think two people asked about it, asking about our full tuition scholarships. So Wheaton has limited full tuition scholarships, primarily our multicultural scholarships for students who qualify from underrepresented backgrounds. 
and students can still apply for those even if they miss our early action application deadline. It will mean that a student who may have been admitted in early action one or early action two will be considered for a full tuition scholarship in the spring, likely in February or a little bit later. And so that information will take longer, of course, to come to you. But students who are admitted to Wheaton College um, and qualify to apply for one of our full tuition multicultural scholarships can still be considered in the regular decision round. Students will need to apply for that by February 15th. And maybe I could just mention, um, Jason, that with our full tuition scholarships, um, also with our ROTC and the Yellow Ribbon Program, though those full tuition um, scholarships do supersede the merit scholarships or the Wheaton grant. So if you get your uh, financial aid award first and it has an academic scholarship or a Wheaton grant, but then get subsequently get a full tuition um, scholarship, it does supersede those funds. Great. I'm looking at the time and I know there's a few questions we did not get to. If you have other outstanding questions, please include them in the chat. We download the chat, we turn into a document, we answer questions from our experts across campus and then get the responses out to you. So please feel free to include those in the chat in the next couple minutes before we close it down. Um, now, of course, as Karen has mentioned, if you have further questions and you wanna set up a phone call, whether because your family situation is more particular um, or uh, you feel like a public setting just wasn't the right time to have these and you have a more situational question, please contact us through the Enrollment Service Center at the number listed on the screen or set up an appointment. You can email SFS at wheaton.edu. Finally, again, I want to say thank you all so much for joining with us. I hope this has been both informative and encouraging for you. Um, a few calls to action for you just to keep in mind as we go forward. If you've been admitted to Wheaton College uh, and are looking for your financial aid package, first remember you do need to submit your FAFSA to Wheaton. This is true of any applicant or student who is in the application process. Um, submitting your FAFSA now and soon ensures you get your final your full financial aid package as soon as possible and that you are max given a maximized consideration for all the financial aid that is available at Wheaton for you. If you have yet to apply to Wheaton College, I am sorry to say we will not give you a scholarship unless you are applying at least, so you do need to do that first. Please make sure to apply by our next application deadline, which will be January 15th encourage you to um, even spend the next couple weeks or the Christmas break to hone your application and get it submitted then. It should only take you about 45 minutes at most and that includes any essay, any extra work, you can get it done in a really short amount of time, but you do need to apply to be considered for this excellent opportunity at Wheaton. Uh, finally, we do have other events that are virtual and available to connect with, including our video campus tour. Um, we'll have a session coming up later this uh, month with our Center for Vocation and Career and weekly sessions with admissions counselors to share more about what life at Wheaton is like and how your journey to Wheaton can happen. You can sign up for all those virtual presentations at wheaton.edu slash visit, and we look forward to connecting further. Um, please again, include any more questions in the chat. Um, before we go, I'd like to pray a blessing for you, you students and your families in this process and send you on your way. If you'd be willing, please close your eyes and bow your head with me. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to you for your many good gifts. It is good and right everywhere and always to give you thanks and praise. And even tonight, Lord, to take one hour together to learn and grow and consider what Wheaton may have in store for every single one of these students and families on this call. We do pray for these families, Lord, that you lead them into all truth and wisdom as they discern the right college fit for their families and for their futures. And ask, Lord, you truly would provide for all of their needs. And we ask these things in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you all so much again for joining us. Have a great night. Thank you, Karen, so much for your time with our students and families. Have a great night or day and God bless. Bye.